Imagine coming back home from a long day of work, expecting a warm welcome from your wife and your little child, only to be greeted by her dead body in her pool of blood with her head smashed and the little boy crying beside her. This story is very sad. 31-year-old Adamu Alaje Ibrahim came back home from work one day on the 17th of October 2023 and found his wife Fatima laying in her pool of blood with her head smashed and their young toddler beside her. Fatima had been killed someone had murdered her in the most brutal way you could imagine luckily for them the little boy was unhurt however he was left to witness the killer beat and strangle his mother it's not like if he cried throughout because if he did i would suspect neighbors could have heard him cry and maybe should have been discovered earlier but it was not until Adamu came back from work, which by the way, he worked in a bank. He was a banker. And as you can imagine, the bank closed towards the end of the day. So it's easy to understand that he most likely came home very late. It's not clear when his wife was attacked, but it was not until he came back home that her body was discovered by him. Imagine coming back home from a long day of work, expecting a warm welcome from your wife and your little child, only to be greeted by her dead body in her pool of blood with her head smashed and the little boy crying beside her. Adamu did not know what to do. This is not something anyone prepares for. This is not something anyone imagined would ever happen to them. Of course, there was no time to absorb the whole situation. Now he would have to deal with what he had seen. And quickly, it was said he called his friend, a man named Wadia who then suggested to him to take the cops to the police station and explain to them, you know, what he knew about the whole situation. After filing a police report on the situation, he called her family to inform them of what had happened. However, her family did not believe him. To make matter worse for him, she was the daughter of a notable politician in Meduguri, Bornu State, where this incident took place. Fatima was the daughter of a member of the Bornu State House of Assembly. So her father is pretty powerful. Her father is very influential. And when he heard the news of his daughter being killed in her home since she was a housewife in a very brutal manner, obviously, I don't know any man who would believe it. And I would understand her father not believing the husband that he did not know anything about it. And as usual, when one of a couple is said to have been killed or found dead, the surviving one should be the first suspect. When her death was publicized and it made the news, obviously everyone suspected the man. Honestly, I did too, but it was only natural. The governor of Bernou State ordered for an investigation to be carried out as well as an autopsy. And when, when the police took up the case, Adamu and his friend Wadia were arrested and kept in custody. You know, they were pretty much the first suspect, citing that they were the one who went to get her body and took the body to the police station. It's not clear an autopsy was conducted, but Fatima's body was immediately handed to her family who then took it for burial pretty much the next day, citing their Islamic religious background. Even her child was also taken by her parents and obviously that is reasonable, saying the fact that the man Adamu is the prime suspect. So I would not be surprised or it's normal for her family to take her and the child and probably everything relating with her until he is proven not guilty. But the big question is, did Adamu really kill his wife? And if he did, why would he want to do so? All that was left now was the police to prove to us that he did it, as that is what the investigation was supposed to reveal. Now, it turned out that there were slight rumors or evidence that suggested Adamu had a motive to want to kill his wife. Fatima was a housewife and she was also a student. And if you look very well, you can tell that she's a very beautiful woman, a very young woman at that. There are even claims that she was an 18-year-old wife. Some sources say she's 20, other sources say she's 21. But one thing is clear, she's very young and very beautiful. But is that enough reason to want to kill your wife? No, it's really not. When the story blew up, a lot of people started pointing out that they had heard Adamu and his wife having series of arguments and that at one point or at some point or at one point in time Adamu had accused Fatima of cheating on him. He had pretty much accused her of infidelity. You know because as a housewife she's always at home and whenever she's in school she will most likely be met by a lot of guys who would have interest in her giving her beauty and her youthfulness. And that was how people started assuming or connecting the dots saying that Adamu clearly had accused her of being unfaithful and that was his motive to either kill her directly or send someone to do it. But that was one aspect. Don't also forget that 
Fatima's father is a politician and that was when people flipped the story over to assume that maybe it was some political rivalry that her father was dealing with that targeted the daughter. People presumed that it was the father's political enemy that came for her and they probably would have killed the husband too if he was around. However, remember they didn't touch the child so it was clear they only came for her which in both cases given the father's possible a political enemy and giving the husband Adamu's infidelity accusation there is no need for them to want to hurt or harm the child but then is the evidence strong enough this is all that is needed to point the finger at either her father's political enemies or him those were just mere speculations and mere assumptions this was just people connecting the dots the police still needed to carry out their investigation to find more evidence to prove that he did it or he did not do it. And it did not take long for the police to actually find out the killer. During the police investigation, when they searched the crime scene, they recovered a lot of things from where she was killed. A short mortar pestle, a bag of rope, the carpet was stained with blood, a knife, even one of the pillow was stained with mucus and not necessarily blood, which meant or which assumed or which gave the uh, police the impression that she also fought back the person who tried to kill her that she pretty much put up a fight and whoever did it could have also been injured one way somehow however what they could not find on the scene was her mobile phone her infinix phone which means the killer took her phone and that was when the police knew they had to trace her mobile phone which they did and it led them to five individuals tracing fatima's infinix phone led the police to arresting five men and it was those five men that eventually opened up to the police where they got the mobile phone from, leading to the arrest of a 23-year-old man named Abacha Buka. He was the one who had sold that mobile phone to one of those five men that the phone tracing led to. But how did he get the phone? Who is he? And was he the one that killed Fatima? It turned out that he was the one that killed Fatima. As it so happened that he was Fatima's ex-boyfriend. They used to date right before Fatima moved on and got married to Adamu. I'm sure probably he did not take the breakup very well. Or maybe he was still obsessed. And you know, as we've seen in many cases, he most likely had the mentality that if he could not have her, no one could. When interrogated, Abacha did admit to killing Fatima. Even if he refused to admit it, the odds were against him. There were even visible injuries in his fingers. Visible injuries that suggested that he had been in a fight. Which made the police understand that he got those injuries from trying to kill Fatima. As this was a breakthrough for the police, in finding the killers of Fatima, Adamu Alaji and his friend Wadia were released from prison. <laughs> And the first thing Adamu did after he got his freedom was visit the gravesite of his wife. He wasn't there during the burial because he was arrested immediately. And so when he got his freedom, he came straight to her, crying and weeping profusely by her grave. God, I'm tearing up. During an interview, he said everything that had happened was a test to his faith and that he had forgiven the people that spread rumors about him, you know, suggesting that he had every reason to kill his wife because everybody's opinion then was very strong. Everybody had strong opinions that he was the one. Who would have guessed it was Fatima's ex-boyfriend? Who would have, who would have guessed? If for some reason, Abacha did not take her mobile phone, he wouldn't have been caught. He wouldn't have been traced. No one saw anything. No one saw him. If he had done what he did and left, it would have been very impossible or difficult to have found him. It was because of the mobile phone that he took and probably sold to a group of people that he was caught. And thank God he did that. Otherwise, if the killer was not found, he would have remained in prison for the longest of time and most likely he would have been the one to have gone on trial. And given the evidence, given the claim that he had accused his wife of infidelity, I don't see why he most likely won't be found guilty. Because every fingers were pointing at him. And the girl's father was very powerful and influential. So to these men, they don't really care what the police come up with. All they want is find somebody to pin this on, to put this on, and 
get the person you know arrested for life and i can imagine how hurt or how, how heartbroken fatima's father or family would have been that they wouldn't care they wouldn't let him go scot-free they would hold him accountable to the very last but as fate had it the real killer was found and adamu got his freedom back to pay his last respect to his wife I kind of wonder how his relationship with the girl's family would be like because I know now he would have to go back to his uh, to, to his child and get his child back and you know hopefully they repair their family and everything is back to normal it's really unfortunate but I'm happy for him I'm happy this was not pinned on him I can imagine how many people are rotting in prison for a crime that they did not commit I can imagine that and such would have been his case if not for the due diligence of the police to do their job. See, sometimes when the police do their job, justice is truly served. communicate <laughs> The same thing for low corner. And it don't fair any time of fair animal. Disengage completely, detach completely from the person. You can never know who have evil mind towards you that is seeing you and is, is sad about seeing you and is thinking of your death. Because in your fanya she wanted to look up a long way up a man will look for a long fire. It's so sad and it's so crazy. A joy, don't have anything to do with your ex. Your ex can never have a good thought towards you. I'm telling you, be it ex-wife or ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or ex-girlfriend. Any time if you're any na delay delay tell it, tell father divorce. Tony can look to car. Oh, run la ni em and Jeff and me. I want me. I want learn how to let go. Some people don't have the strength and capacity to do what to move on. I talk only me. I talk beni me. Both gender low man. Low low low. Let me rule problem ye. Oh, beni me or my. Eh, fair any man. Oh, to move on. Oh, only me or my. Eh, fair any man. Oh, to move on. But I want me. Man, find it difficult to move on. Yeah, low me or low me or my how to do it. Some people don't know how to go and start all over and concentrate on, on their life. Some people they don't have. They don't know how to move on. Unfortunately, a lot of our women don't have the capacity to move on. Yeah, I want no kin share that any relationship. I want no mama me yon to unfair to mama take care for granted. Ten year ba lotan wa bere sin wa bita. Ten year ba lotan wa ma ataki the new the new eh, person. Ten year relate to you. You can imagine. Okolo kwa wano ma ni mental problem. Toma ma toma ya wele. Siori social media. Toma ma so so kuso eni to oti for kole for so many years. Toko ti move on to ti fe ya wo mi. Wama buli ya wo mi toko enye fe. Iwa to fi ya wo le. Ti ya wo lo foko mi. Wama buli oko mi. Ti ya wo nye fe. Wama wabi wa she kwa. Wama wabi wa she dani wanru. Wama sa kwe yon. Igba wo wane kwe suka. Ki lo ke embe. Eni to oti fi le to lo fe man. It, it, it is crazy. Some people they don't just you see they don't they, they don't learn how to how to grow how to move on how to have a life of their own and how to you know have a life that will, that will make them to become successful after somebody has left them. A whole lot of people don't they have not learned they have not had good relationship with God to the extent that they come to a state that they ha they move on with life. A lot of people don't know that. All they know is that one fairly the hand you open basically any to fi one lenye in this wide world. I get all wide to go to fair to gin to baji. You can imagine. It's just it's just crazy. Timo when the news came out now, ex lady nyelo lo kwa manule. Ki loro debe. Ki ni ru tot inye she le wase me. In your fair man move on with your life. I think people need to start learning how to to deal with loss. Loss. To ba loss thing kan. Maybe you lost a loved one. You lost a family a family member. You lost a, a woman. You lost a man. You lost your job. You lost your whatever. You lost your money. You lost a page. You lost anything. To ti jiafun. How do you deal with loss? Nobody is praying for loss. But when you lost a relationship, you lost your job, you lost... How do you deal with it? I think we need to, to treat a topic on loss. What does it mean to lose something? You understand? And how to move on? Because I don't know. You are a good person. 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 chat with him. So you are chat with him. You to disengage completely with him. Probably you are a good person. Paolo shall address in West State, no long bay. Paolo shall address in one. All of these things are just, oh, 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 oh,
please disengage from your ex. You have no business with your ex. Even if your ex become the president, you should not start thinking of be being his first lady. So, but look, man, what you are telling the person is even if you become the governor, I don't want to be your first lady. Even if you become uh, the president, I don't want to be your first lady. That is what you are telling the person. So, but the job, you know, to become great tomorrow. You don't want to be a, a husband again. That is what you are saying. Learn to say no and mean your no. Bible says, let your yes be yes and let your no be no. He said any other thing apart from this comes from the evil ones. You confuse yourself. Confusion, you don't want to get frustrated. Imagine about the existence of the person again, no matter what. So please, when you are married, you are married. So when you ex, disengage from all your ex. Ato bini ato kuni. Kwa ex ni yangu kimi good fire nyo. Fun watu bani ex, wangu kimi good fun. Kujua kuni ni ni kujua bini ni ex no they mean good. Especially later, yeah, bantes wajule ni bato fun wansi le. They don't want good for you. Ya to fun to bali mi olo nuno, so they move on kwelo aye. To ba fi ni le le ni ta aye da lola. Omi kwe toro wani no aye la aye ufi grow ni ye. Yes. Toro no wa no aye la aye te no ufi grow. Everyone should move on with his life. Learn how to deal with loss and to move on. I think we need to do research on that and come and present it. So often go go a water and wonder that I'm so quick. Ni ex again yena lo wa pamele o. Ex again yena lo wa pamele ori o koti o ni fi aje. Toro o koti ni prime suspect. O koti no koti ti mali. Ache she ingba o ni new sin sin ni pe. Ex again ye. O lo de ni tori ko fe un. O ni she pa. O lo mo jashini mo jori wo gba bo de o. Ata wo ati go go le wa te ni te o kan te o kan wa ti go go an wo lo fe wa pata pata. Ori wo mi gba bo de o. Tori ko jesu a bo do ni she le si wa.